The number you have dialed has been changed. The new number is... Please note, the new number is... So, my name is Brian Powell. <laughs> I just put a picture up there just in case we couldn't get it light. Uh, this is what I look like if I have a beard and longer hair. Um, I originally uh, was born and did my master's degree in the Netherlands. After this, I went to Denmark for my PhD um, and my first postdoc. And during my first postdoc, I was, shi I was shipped abroad all the way to Japan. <laughs> now, I've been here for one year and three quarters years. Um, I started the names a couple of months ago. So what I will show you here is mostly, mostly pipe dreams. Um, anyway, what I've been working on in the past um, uh, has been a variety of materials. I'm interested in a lot of things, very short attention span. Um, I've been working on fibers uh, for my PhD, then I've worked on uh, nanoparticle growth in supercritical conditions. Um, now I'm back uh, to fibers, but not only to fibers, I'm also looking at metallic materials such as uh, shape memory materials or, um, uh, and uh, precipitation hardened materials uh, such as these uh, magnesium uh, alloys. And I'm interested in actually many more materials. Um, the one thing that these all have in common uh, is that deep down inside, uh, they all have an amazing structure. Uh, not only that, they also have amazing properties. Um, and uh, many people have for years suggested the link between these two. Um, and uh, I'm very interested in these links between the internal nanostructure and the properties of the material. Now, we're very good at measuring the properties of material, but the actual uh, 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 decent characterization of the internal structure uh, uh, remains sometimes challenging. Um, so I'm interested in determining the nanoscale structure uh, of a bulk, uh, uh, on a bulk scale, um, and at the same time getting uh, uncertainties for all of the parameters that I determine. Um, for this, I'm not using uh, I'm not using electron microscopy. Uh, I'm using a, a, a much older technique. It's called SACS. This stands for a small angle X-ray scattering. Um, although uh, X-rays are specifically mentioned here, uh, small angle scattering can also be done with uh, neutrons, uh, electrons, if you're massive, <laughs> and uh, light. Um, and uh, as such, it has actually existed for a hundred years. Um, these machines, well, the X-ray version of it, uh, they vary from desktop, desktop-sized machines to laboratory-filling machines. Um, this one filled an entire basement, um, and of course, small and large synchrotrons. And we're using these machines then to really characterize a structure which is many orders of magnitude smaller. Um, for example, uh, uh, nanopores uh, or precipitates or anything like that. And the way we're doing this is by shining a well-collimated beam of neutrons or electrons or light onto our sample. And electron density differences in the sample uh, will cause a small amount of this radiation to be scattered. We then stop the main beam, because otherwise it will damage the detector. <laughs> the detectors are not good enough yet. Um, and we measure the actual scatter radiation. Um, so I'll, I'll give you a quick, look, um, uh, a, quick, a quick idea of what this looks like. Um, take, for example, a simplified version of, my, uh, uh, of some spherical particles. What we see on the detector of a small angle scattering machine is related to the Fourier transform of this structure. Um, some of you may know that if you take a Fourier transform out of this, you get both the phase and intensity. Unfortunately, due to technical limitations, we cannot measure the phase, so we're left with the intensity. Um, what that looks like for a monodispersed structure, for example, monodispersed spheres, is shown here on the right. It's an oscillating function. Um, uh, repeating itself many, many times over. Now, if we have a polydispersed structure, all these oscillations start overlapping and we start, uh, uh, that will disappear. So we get a smooth intensity decay as we go further out. Um, so what we're interested in, in isotropic systems uh, uh, or spherical, spherical systems is only the uh, intensity 
as a function of the distance uh, from the beam, from the direct beam. You can see the shadow of the beam stop here where we've stopped the direct beam. Uh, well. um, so if we plot this, um, it looks something like this. Of course, we measure on an absolute scale and with, uh, with statistics for each of our data points. Um, and then the next step is to analyze this. Um, this has been the headache of many people for the last 100 years. Um, what I've recently implemented is a Monte Carlo method uh, to solve this. So what this Monte Carlo method does is it compares the measured intensity with the Monte Carlo intensity. Monte Carlo intensity has been generated um, from a spherical distribution or uh, a distribution of spheres according to this size distribution. And then using an iterative trial and error method, um, we uh, increasingly uh, uh, we start changing the size distribution so that the Monte Carlo intensity gets closer and closer to our actual measured intensity. This allows us to retrieve a particle size distribution for uh, precipitates in our sample. Uh, and we can do this to within the uncertainty of our data so that we know that we've extracted all the information that we can from the, uh, uh, from the scattering pattern. Which is emphasized over here. The yellow line is my fit and it fits well within the, uh, uh, well within the errors. Um, and from this then we get our size distribution and of course also uncertainty there because that was one of the goals of my, um, of my project. There's one more, one more thing that I want to talk about. At the moment, we have one instrument um, capable of measuring both isotropic and anisotropic systems. We can determine length scales from about one instrument to, uh, to about uh, several tens of nanometers, 20 or 30, uh, 30 if you're lucky. Um, the um, the, um, the head of the lab uh, actually gave me an old x-ray generator uh, to play with. That's this one. So I'm, uh, I'm spending now some time to build a new machine over here. Um, this new machine will allow us to measure in, uh, in a larger uh, uh, size range. So we measure from about, uh, from about two or three nanometers all the way up to, to uh, microns. So in total, we will be able to measure nanostructure from one angstrom all the way up to a micron uh, or more. Um, so, in the end, I hope to be able to determine this nanoscale bulk structure with uncertainties for all the parameters, for all the structural parameters that I determine, so that we can uh, make more accurate uh, structure property relationships. Um, and uh, uh, of all of these materials, and perhaps some of your materials. So please think about whether you could use this technique and I'd be very happy to get in touch with you. That's it. If you want to get some more information, uh, some code, some software, movies, uh, documentation, <laughs> and uh, more, please uh, check out my website. Uh, and uh, thank you all very much for your